What does a buyer's agent even do? Well, that's the question that I'm gonna answer and we're gonna start right now. Hey guys, Hans Strazina with the Gunderman Group at Keller Williams Luxury International coming to you with another video. This time I want to talk to you about what is the buyer's agent position and what should you expect from that person. A lot of people are really unclear about this um, and where the standard is and, and what kind of care that they should expect. Uh, so I'm going to clear that up in this video today. If you get value out of this, please consider giving me a thumbs up on the video and subscribing to the channel because I am going to be putting out weekly content just like this uh, to keep giving you resources and education on the buying and selling process here in the East Bay uh, so you can have the most knowledge and the most information possible to make the best decisions. So what does a buyer's agent even do? Uh, well, first of all, let's talk about the minimum threshold here. Uh, obviously, that person has to hold a real estate license in the state that you are trying to buy in. That goes without saying, so just make sure you always ask um, that there are licenses active and in good standing. Uh, because it does legally bind them to a fiduciary relationship to you as a client. And that basically means that they have to put your interest above their own. Just make sure you meet that minimum criteria. Beyond that, um, on a very practical level, there's a couple of key areas that a buyer's agent should uh, perform and make sure that they can get done for you at a very, very high level. And no, it's not necessarily searching. Uh, with the advent of Zillow and Redfin and all that stuff, people have a ton of a search uh, criteria and, and ability to search listings that are available on the market. And um, frankly, when it hits the MLS, almost more than likely you're going to be able to see it just as quickly as your agent does. But depending on the market you're a part of, uh, you want to make sure that you're seeing all the inventory. Well, what am I talking about? There is at any time of the year, usually 10 to sometimes as much as 30% of an inventory uh, being listed uh, off market. And that is changing and some of the rules on that are changing, but it still exists. And so you want to make sure that your agent is able to access that inventory and uh, know who to talk to uh, to go find it for you. Because a lot of the times the right house for you may not even hit the MLS. So other than searching for property and uh, off-market opportunities or coming soon opportunities for you, um, that agent needs to be really, really well versed in both the local uh, building and architecture styles um, as well as the problems that go along with them. Uh, here in the Bay Area, we transact totally as is, which basically means the seller creates a disclosure packet, they do inspections, they do all these reports up front and hand them to a buyer and expect them to read them, understand them, and make an offer with those repairs and those defects baked into it. Uh, so you wanna make sure that when you work with a buyer's agent, they have a couple of key things. Uh, first of all, they just have knowledge of the disclosures and how to read them. There's sometimes upwards of 300 pages of documentation coming along with a house and an agent uh, who's done this before will be able to dissect it and dilute it down to the most key areas for you to make your first pass at. But beyond that, you want to look uh, at what's not on the page or not obvious on the page, which is sometimes things like the reputation of the inspector or a lack of a further investigation. For example, test holes are a really big thing here. We have a lot of stucco property or, or houses that have stucco on the side of them and they have flat roofs or very little overhang over the side of the roof. Uh, so there's usually an opportunity for uh, moisture to basically get behind the wall of the stucco. And if you open up a report and you know it's a flat roof and a stucco siding, 
uh, and you don't see a test holes report, it's usually a red flag that either someone missed something or someone was trying to be cheap and uh, not pay the extra couple hundred dollars to have the test hole report done. Um, and to that point, you need to be able to have relationships with uh, local vendors, inspectors, contractors, and people who can, at a relatively short notice, come in and either do an inspection once you get an offer accepted or possibly do a quick walkthrough with you uh, and put their eyes on the property so that you know that what you're buying is basically what's being represented. So having those relationships is critical. You need to be able to, as an agent, really dig in and read the comps. Here in the East Bay, the geography changes really fast. It's, a, it's kind of all built on a hill. And so three or four blocks away could be a totally different neighborhood with a totally different set of comps um, because of you know the earthquakes and the fires that we had in the late 80s and early 90s. Um, some houses are new as of them, and, and then three blocks over, um, they're, they're 60, 70 years older. So you need to be able to, to, to determine um, that difference. And then same thing with the very local geography of the neighborhoods. There are a lot of micro neighborhoods inside of neighborhoods that only someone who's local, who studies, who goes out on tour and reads comps well will be able to make adjustments for you because you could either totally overpay uh, based on what side of the street you're on or completely underpay and not even be close because you got bad advice and you used bad comps. And lastly is the negotiation. There's, there's the obvious sort of back and forth question asking once your offer's in, if you have multiple offers, trying to figure out who's been writing, um, what their styles are, and uh, who you're probably competing against. So that's pretty obvious. But the other parts are actually before um, your offer actually goes in. Number one, asking the right questions of the listing agent to find out how many offers are coming in, who's writing them, um, but also, figuring out creative ways uh, to increase the chance of your offer being accepted by the seller. Um, for example, there are strategies that very wealthy people often use to uh, show a different type of offer, meaning an all cash offer, um, when they never intended on writing an all cash offer. Uh, so being able um, to be confident that your, your agent has the ability uh, to negotiate on your behalf, but also do the inspections, build the relationships with the other agents, with the vendors, and uh, know uh, what in a disclosure packet what's there and what's missing so that you can fill in the gaps for yourself is absolutely critical. And that's it. Uh, those are the really key high level things that a buyer's agent absolutely needs to be able to do for you uh, here in the market of the East Bay. Um, if you have any questions about what I said there, you want a further example or further clarification on what a test hole is or what a disclosure packet is or, or how to potentially show a different down payment amount or manipulate your offer to be a little more attractive, uh, drop it down in the comments section. Happy to answer it there or shoot me a direct message or an email and I'm happy to engage with you on that. Um, but make sure nonetheless you watch this video a couple times, take a few notes and uh, ask your uh, agent who you're working with um, what their answers to those questions are gonna be because that is really, really critical if you wanna be successful here in the East Bay. So without any further ado, I'm gonna sign it off. So this is Hans Strazina with the Gunderman Group at Keller Williams Luxury International and I'll see you next time.